And now here to talk about economic policies as we run into these European Union elections, but not only is Professor Eric Jones, director of the Robert Schuman Center for Advanced Studies at the European University Institute. Hello, and thank you for joining us on TVP World. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, what do you think is at stake in terms of economic policy in these elections? Um, there could be a lot. The European Union is in a situation right now where it has huge economic policy decisions to make. Um, I think the most important is going to be about how much the European Union is willing to spend in investing for defense, in re-industrializing <coughs> its economy to have uh, greener technology at the basis, uh, and in changing the regulatory environment to make it easier for capital to move from one country to the next. Now, the European Parliament is not responsible for all of those things, but it will play a crit critical role in the legislative process on most of those things. And so we've got to see what kind of a European Parliament we get and how effectively it's going to be able to engage in legislation. And so on the topic of the European economy, there surely are a number of challenges that it faces. How should they be combated? Well, I think the, the biggest challenge for the European economy as a European economy is the differences in national capabilities and national finances from one country to the next. What you don't want is for the internal market to fragment because some countries have more resources and are able to respond much more quickly and effectively to the need for industrial transformation and other countries get left behind. Now, this is a challenge because politically it means that we're going to have to move resources from one country to another in order to ensure that there's a level playing field across the internal market. Uh, leveling the playing field right that is very challenging, but they were able to do it in the context of the pandemic and they're going to have to figure out a way to do it again. Right, and that's something that's been a big issue here in Poland. Now, U.S. and China are heavily investing in a strategic sector, for instance, chip, chip manufacturing, and especially in light of the supply chain issues we saw during the pandemic. Um, how should this new global normal influence EU institutional decision making? Um, and is this perhaps a source for innovation within the European economy? Well, there certainly needs to be innovation in the European economy. Um, the, the investments that are going to be made in these strategic sectors by the United States and that have already been made by China are, are, are investments that the Europeans will struggle to match. I think that's the issue that that redistribution I talked about uh, points at. Um, they'll struggle to match because only some countries have the resources to do that. But the money does need to be mobilized. And one way to mobilize that money is through governments and the other is through markets. And both of those things will require legislation from this new European Parliament. Whether that results in, in further innovation, that will remain to be seen. Certainly. Well, another, another issue uh, is that of electric cars and, uh, well, the fact that they're quite cheap and they're coming from China. Uh, should the EU really consider implementing some kind of limitations, some kind of barriers uh, in order to protect its markets? I mean, it's a difficult thing to ask, right? Because on the one hand, you definitely want to have cheap electric cars because you need to electrify the whole automotive fleet across the European Union in order to engage in effective climate action. On the other hand, you don't want to give those jobs that go with electric automotive vehicles away to China if China's engaged in unfair competition. The United States has already decided to put a 100% tariff on electric vehicles coming from China. I suspect the European Union won't put a tariff that high, but it will try to level the playing field in many respects. Um, I've observed, I'm going to throw this in, I've observed that the Europeans are more betting on the Green Deal and using the industrial base that goes with it to stifle growth and innovation on the European continent. But we just talked about like a sector like chips. Um, and that is something that, as you mentioned, the Europeans are further behind. Which road should they take? Should, maybe they should take uh, the cheap uh, green goods coming out of China and, and, and focus more on technology. What's your opinion on that? Um, unfortunately, I think we have to do both, right? I mean, the, the, the one thing that we cannot afford is to have all of the high value added manufacturing jobs go out of Europe. In the transition from mechanical cars the way we have now that are based on internal combustion engines to electric vehicles are going to take a large number of jobs 
away. And you ideally would want those jobs to be replaced in manufacturing industries that offer the same value added. You also want the supply chain security that comes from having your own chips manufacturer. So I think you need to have both if the European economy is going to prosper. Indeed, and we uh, wanted to hear your opinion and your thoughts on the Green Deal, which is probably one of the most contentious uh, topics. It's gone from being a, a concept to one of the highest priorities in the EU to an issue that is affecting farmers and has become the slogan amongst you know, the, the regular EU citizen. Um, and undoubtedly have an effect on these elections. Absolutely. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Is it, uh, is it something that has to be redefined, readdressed, uh, in the EU and perhaps a number one challenge uh, for the new EU parliament? I think, I, I think the way you frame that redefining or readdressing the European Green Deal uh, is in many ways critical. We've known for more than 30 years that we need to do effective climate action. And for too long, we've been trying to sell it as a cost-free alternative. Uh, and, and it's not cost free. It's a very expensive thing. We need to mobilize politically around paying that price. And, and that means making sure that farmers are not so adversely affected, but we still have effective climate action because without it, without effective climate action in Europe, um, then, then the costs of adjusting to higher global temperatures are gonna be even worse uh, than we already face. But is that is that really, like how can we actually approach that? Because there are several, hidden costs to actually implementing the Green Deal. I think probably one of the most um, practical examples of trying to be perhaps more environmentally friendly that probably the average EU citizen can uh, tell you about is the attached uh, uh, bottle caps. Uh, and people have very mixed feelings about that. But what we do know is that it was very, very expensive to implement. And it was obviously a very, well, whether or not it is an effective attempt to be uh, more litter free is uh, yet to be assessed. But if you see where I'm, where I'm heading with this, it's, it's an attempt to make Europe more environmentally friendly, but it was very, very expensive to implement. That's a very, it's a oh, micro agree. example. It's a micro example of being more environmentally friendly, shall we say, but there are much more larger scales, larger scale examples of implementing this. I mean, I, look, I don't, want to, I, I don't want to deny that there are these costs involved. And, and we need to look at the costs and benefits and make political decisions about that. So I agree with you completely on that as well. I mean, but the, but the problem of non-recyclable plastics is one that we've already admitted we have to face. And the volume of non-recyclable plastics that are being produced and consumed in Europe right now is hallucinatory, not through the plastic water bottles that you're talking about, but mostly for industrial wrapping. Uh, so that we can move these big pallets of goods from one place to the next. We've got to come up with better solutions than that. It doesn't have to be so costly, but it certainly would have a huge environmental impact. Certainly. Well, Professor Eric Jones, director of the Robert Schumann Center for Advanced Studies at the European University Institute, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate your insight, and we hope to see you here on TVP World again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.